Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's get started with a little warm up. We'll do just some two voice and we will start with the plaintiff attorney. Ready? Here we go. Did he appear to you to be dead at that time? I didn't know whether he was dead or not. I didn't examine him. You just pushed him over in the front seat, is that right? He was already in the front seat. He was sitting about middle ways. He was close to the steering wheel, so I pushed his body over so that I could get room to drive. Did you notice any blood on the floor in the back of that car? I did not even turn around to look in the car. I just drove the car. Did you notice your hat was in the car? I didn't know anything was in the car at all but him and me. Now when did Vi take your hat? She took my hat the first time that she called me to come over. She threw her arm around me and tell me that we can make some money. Did you ever try to get your hat back from her? I never thought no more about my hat because she took my hat many times and would return it to me. Was she wearing your hat when you last saw her? When she took it off my head, she put it on her head. Did she have it on her head? when they took you home. I don't know whether she had it on then because I did not pay any attention to it. Did you see your hat at all that night after Vi had it? The only time I saw my hat is when I saw it in the police station when they showed it to me. Well, didn't you see it when the police arrested you out there? This was at the police station when they showed me the hat. They didn't show it to you when they first arrested you? Not to my knowing. Knowledge? No. Now, incidentally, how much money did you have on your person when you were in the car with Mr. Horner after you drove him home? Well, I had a few dollars and some change. I may have had a dollar's worth of change. Maybe I had a little bit more. Did you drive across any curb or on the lawn at all? No, I, I didn't. All right, now let's work on our transcript. And we are actually getting near the end. Oh, sorry, we'll start with defense attorney on this one. Ready? Here we go. The western end of the north side, yes, it would be the west end of the easement, the abandoned railroad property, and it would be the north side of the area that was fenced. How do you know it was the railroad that did that? Well, I say the railroad. It was the railroad because I talked to the superintendent back there that was going to work for the railroad. They built the whole area back there for TNZ Trucking Transport Company. My understanding was that they built it and then they leased the property to them over so many years. So I'm assuming it's the railroad that built it. But the man that was supervising the work told you he was doing it for the railroad? Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. No problem. Just a couple of things. Can I see the photo? Mr. Miller looking again at number three and your property on there. Does that appear to be any items located where you've marked A on the photo of that? We have equipment and shears and benders and stuff that are all right there. That's what all that black looking stuff is. That's materials and racks and stuff like that. It's on the property right there. It's been there. We've used it for years and years. So those are your items there, right? They belong to us. You've had a close association with this property apparently since 1982, I think you said. That's correct. During any of that time, have you ever seen anybody other than this dirt that you've indicated was spread around the lot to the south? Have you ever seen anybody else use any portion of what might be that easement from Rancho to the end of your property? Nobody has ever used it except us. Nobody. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of anybody making some use of that? No. Other than yourself? Never. You've spoken with one or more of the Elliots over the years? Yes. Do you remember which Elliots you've spoken to? I've talked to Joe quite a few times, 
and in any of the conversations you've had with Joe Elliott, has he ever indicated any use that he or anybody associated with him might have made of any land falling within this easement to the south of your property? No, he hasn't, not at all. I have nothing further. I would offer to stipulate that the deposition can be delivered to your office, that the reporter be delivered of her duties, that you will cause the witness to execute or make any changes to the deposition within the number of days we'll arrive at in a minute, and he will execute it under penalty of perjury, and that you'll deliver the original deposition within a time period that we need to agree upon. What time period would be appropriate? We have a settlement conference at the end of this month, or next month, I think it's next month, off the record, back on the record. The time period will be 15 days from the time of delivery of the deposition to Mr. Jones. Is that okay with the county? So stipulated. Thank you very much, sir. And a copy can be used if the original is unavailable. We will agree that if it's not executed and returned within the time period indicated, a copy can be used as if it was the original without change. So stipulated. So stipulated. Start a new transcript. We will start with the plaintiff attorney. Ready? Here we go. Again, I'm not trying to intimidate you. What I'm trying to say is what I'm really after today is your best and most accurate memory today of the events that I ask you about, okay? Yes, sometimes I ask about times, dates, measurements that you may not have an exact memory of, but because you lived it and perceived it, you would have a best estimate but I don't want, what I don't want you to do is to guess. If I ask you how long the pen is that I have in my hand from life's experience, you can look at the pen and give me an estimate. If I asked you how long the pen is in my office right now at home, you'd have no idea. You never saw that pen. You don't know what I'm talking about. That would be a sheer guess, right? I don't want you to guess about anything today. Give me your best estimate, which is really all I'm entitled to, but I am entitled to that, fair enough. Yes. Have you taken any kind of medicine, anything, anything at, anything at all, consumed anything, or do you feel bad, anything at all that would have any bearing on your giving your very best testimony about the accident that happened back on July 18th of 09, giving that testimony today? No. All right, as I said, this is somewhat informal, and that is if you need to take breaks for whatever reason, use the restroom, want to just walk around, you let me know. We'll finish the topic area we're covering and take a break. Hopefully this won't take too long. Okay, counsel, have I covered the things you think I should cover? I think so. I think you got it covered. Well, let's do this. Just to let you know, I'll be going a little bit in your background and cover a little bit on the information about the accident and then some specifics that are in your report. One thing that I think is always important is there are no video cameras today. So nods of the head, shrugs of the shoulders, and even though we're audible here with uh-huhs and huh uhs we need to get an English verbal response, yes and no, if we can. If I say to you, it's, is that a yes or is that a no, please understand I'm not being disrespectful to you. I'm just wanting to make certain a court reporter gets a verbal English response, okay? Okay, let's go first with your background, if you could. 
We're going to start with your high school. Did you graduate from high school? Yes. And what year was that? That was in 2001. And where did you go to high school? I went to high school at Reyes High School in Fresno, California. And while you were in high school, did you have any type of experience with regard to police science, police investigation, anything like that? No. Okay. And after high school, did you have any other kind of formal education? Yes, I went to local community college in Santa Rosa. What was the name of that college? Called Canyon Canyon College. Okay, and that's located in Santa Rosa, California. And what year did you enter? I entered in spring of 2001 and, no, fall of 2001, sorry. Okay, and how long did you go to Canyon College? For three years. And did you end then, according to my notes, it would be around 2004, correct. Did you achieve any kind of certificate degree or anything like that? No. And how many units did you accomplish? I'm not sure. Can you give me an estimate? I don't have the estimate. It's whatever is required to transfer. Oh, okay. Did you transfer? Yes, because you figured out my next question correct. Where did you transfer to? California State University, Los Angeles. What year did you enter? That would have been in 2004, the beginning of 2004. Okay, and how long did you attend there? For two years until approximately 06, 2006, correct. Okay, and there did you achieve any kind of degree or certificate? Yes, what did you get? I got a degree in business administration with a concentration in marketing. It's a bachelor's degree. Yeah, and while you were at Canyon College, did you take any type of a course that involved police science, police investigation, anything like that? No. How about when you were at Cal State Los Angeles? Did you take any courses that involved police science, police investigation, or anything at all that relates to investigation? No. After you graduated with your with your bachelor's, congratulations. In 06, did you have any other formal education after that? No. And that will conclude our Q&A practice.